previous video we looked at various radical radical reactions in terms of how they are actually produced first we looked at the comparison between the thermal processes and also that of the photochemical processes and seeing how both are actually important in the formation of radical products which are actually stable at those conditions now in our video here we're going to look at radical radical reactions mainly in terms of the mechanisms and how two radicals can actually overlap in terms of the bonds and also result in, in stable products and various competitive reactions in various of the mechanisms now first particular one we're going to look at is the combination mechanism and that's we're going to compare with another mechanism which is the disproportionate mechanism now both mechanisms in here are actually known to be an exothermic process where energy is actually released when bonds are actually formed so when we get this into play we are actually able to form bonds when energy are actually released in the process now looking at the first case we see that in terms of the combination mechanism we have our reactants which in this case is a thiol radical with the alpha carbon having its electron ready to react with the same species but on the other side undergoing an interesting mechanism pathway which is called a head-to-head -head reaction so what that results in is the formation of our product which is just one and this is actually butane and this butane compound actually results in 80% or approximately 85% of the products right there however looking at a competitive reaction which is a disproportionation mechanism we actually have the same thing happening but on the other side we actually have a turning of the radical where in this case one of the radical is not actually positioning its alpha carbon but presenting its beta carbon where the beta carbon has a hydrogen exposed right there and what that happens is that the one radical which is the neighboring one presents its electron to this sigma bond and this results in the breaking of the sigma bond and the formation of a pi bond right there so what that results in is the formation of two products one is actually ethane and on the other side we actually have the formation of a pi bond which is ethene and what this results in is just 15% of the other reaction now why is there such a difference in terms of the percentages right there now what we recognize in here in the first case which is the combination reaction is that the bond dissociation energy or I would say in terms of the formation of our sigma bond which is right there accounts for negative I would say 85% so what happens here is that since we're forming a bond we're actually performing an exothermic reaction which results in negative 85% of that bond however if you're going for the breaking of that particular sigma bond to form two radicals that is actually an endothermic process which is positive 85 kilocals per mole however looking at that other 15% right here how is that actually facilitated as a side mechanism for the formation of those products right here now this interesting one is going to be quite fascinating in here because a disproportionate criteria shows that the driving force for this particular 15% is actually the formation of a sigma bond sorry <laughs> a pi bond and this pi bond is actually more stable because it actually has 33% to be a scatter so in this case 
the more a scatter a particular carbon radical is, the more you act or in terms of the product, then that reaction actually is driven towards the formation of a better S character because the S orbital has a stabilizing spur which puts that particular product in its proper place. Now in this particular case, what that results in is that one particular criteria for the second case which is the disproportion criteria is that the one radical must have greater than two carbons so in one example i will just put out right here is where we have a methyl radical reacting with another methyl radical and what that results in one side of the reaction to be the formation of an ethane product which is noticed to be 100 percent and on the other side we have a competitive reaction which is not actually happening in terms of the formation of methane and this compound now why is this compound not stable because in here we have two radicals or two electrons that are actually creating instability in this particular product so creating an unstable product shows that this reaction is not favorable and we're we'll just going to end up with just 100% of the formation of ethane. Now in looking at this in contrast to another I would say example where we have one radical which is methyl radical reacting with I would say ethane where we have an exposed hydrogen right there and we have this beta carbon on this side with we have our other side here also make this two and this radical we have one product which is the formation of propane and while we have the other reaction which is a side mechanism where we have the formation of methane and so what happens here is that on this side of the reaction which is the first part we have a front to front from reaction mechanism where we arrive at I would say this particular compound and on the other side we have a competitive reaction which is the disproportion reaction where we have the front to back overlap where we have this radical reaction with this and this bond breaks and forms a pi bond and leads to the formation of this product right there. So in this case we have a competitive side mechanism which is Kb and we have Ka actually competing in terms of the formation or accounting for that 15% or more but not up to 50%. So that's about it for this particular aspect and here we're going to look more into the second one which is the second criteria where we also need to be able to have a beta hydrogen present right there so one case scenario is where we have this particular phenyl with a radical on this carbon reacting with the same species right there and what that results in is a head-to-head -head reaction which leads to the formation of this R product. So there is no side reaction in here because the side reaction it's noticed that there is no beta hydrogen here on this carbon. So what that results in is just a formation of our head-to-head mechanism that results in the formation of our products right there however looking at it where we're having the other case which is let's just say a cyclohexane with a hydrogen draw this properly what we notice now is that there is an exposed hydrogen right there our the result in is that we have competitive mechanisms actually in display and what that results in is the formation of side products right there where on one side we have this particular product 
uh, while on the other side we have the other product right there which is the formation of our double bond or I would say our pi bond so in this case we have competing reactions which is a front to back which is a disproportionate reaction because of this exposed beta hydrogen where this actually leads to the breaking of a bond and why we actually have this one resulting in the formation of our pi bond and that is accounts for this particular direction of the formation of those products now one other thing we need to take note of is that in terms of first reactions that are sensitive to the solvent viscosity we actually recognize that the solvent viscosity is actually linked to the diffusion coefficient which we're going to talk about on our next video so in this case what we can infer is that in our gaseous reactions we notice that the activation energy is pretty much zero because in here we are having smooth orbital overlap and all our radicals are actually exposed into just the formation of our bond so in this case we don't have any hindrance in terms of what mechanism will be actually facilitated when in gas phase however when we'll have a situation where we have our radicals actually in the solution there we come across other side compounds that inhibit the overlap of various two radicals or introducing proximity of our radicals so as a result of that we actually have I would say a little bit of an activation energy which actually is approximately between 2 to 3 kilocals per mole so as a result of that I would say performing radical radical reaction in the gas phase is actually more efficient I would say than when it is in solution and solution is more I would say influenced by the diffusion coefficient and this is the huge variable behind this particular medium where we perform radical radical reaction compared to the gas phase where we have less of that happening so that's about it for this particular video please hit the comment down below let me hear your thoughts about the mechanisms in here and see you all on my next video all the same stay smart share it with your friends and believe in yourself